Hey, good morning. Happy Thanksgiving 2018. Uh, I wanted to make a second video to kind of take you through the journey that I've been on to finally get to my own hand pan. That thing right there. So, in 2010, I saw a video on YouTube. Uh, maybe I'll wedge a clip of something like that into this video uh, later in editing. And uh, of a hand pan like this. And I instantly had to have one and then went Googling and found out that I couldn't have one because uh, the maker of the instrument at the time, um, Pan Arts in Sweden, was only making a few of them a year. Uh, you, you couldn't just go to their store and buy one. You had to send them a letter to explain why you were worthy of, of a handpan, and nobody really knew what their selection criteria was for deciding who they were going to sell a handpan to. I mean, what, was it the letter that convinced them you were the best musician? Was it the funniest letter? You know, nobody knew. So I didn't even try uh, to get one of those. They were just impossible to get, and the people who had them were very lucky or, or lived in Sweden, something. Nobody knew. So while I was Googling looking for a handpan, I found that there were other instruments uh, based on a, a similar concept of vibrating metal hand-played drums, drum-like things, uh, called hank drums. And so I bought this. Uh, this was my first one that I bought um, just a few weeks after I learned about the existence of this type of instrument. It was only a couple hundred dollars, and, uh, and it's uh, kind of the same idea. It's just cast steel. Anyway, we'll see. I haven't played this one in a while. So there's a low note right there. Sounds like that, it's beautiful. Uh, but the thing about metal slit drums, and this is actually, it's a slit drum that goes all the way back to, uh, to the African slit drums that were basically boxes with, with slits cut in the top to tune, to tune them to a scale. And usually those are played with mallets. This could be played with mallets as well, and it came with a set. a lot louder with the mallets but you'll notice no matter how you hit these notes you just get the fundamental tone there's really no overtones there's no way to pull out a an octave or a fifth it just makes that sound and you can get the sound louder or quieter but you get the same tone basically out of out of these slits no matter what so a little bit later Still, I mean, and this was maybe 2012 at this point, um, Happy, the Happy Drum Company uh, came out with this smaller version. Uh, and this one uh, is tuned to A minor. This one's tuned to C major. And, uh, and this can be played by hand. But it's, it's kind of better with mallets because it's so small. So a little while after that, I saw this this instrument uh, from Israel called uh, from a company called One Tone, and that's this one here. And the cool thing about this was it was kind of a halfway ground where it had this big note that looked exactly like a note on a real hang, you know, where it, it's built like a steel drum, and it's called the ding when it's on top, 
and it's usually the lowest note and it's usually the root note. This should be, I think, a D, but it sounds horrible. This is, uh, and I don't think there's a single note. I don't think there's a single note on this that's in tune. So anyway, let's forget about this because this is probably the worst musical instrument buying decision that I have ever made. I'm usually lucky with this sort of thing, but this is a turd. So no more of that. So about a year and a half ago, I went out looking to see if, if it was possible to buy a hang drum. Still wasn't, uh, but there was this from Moscow, Russia. And this is called a Rav Vast. And it's the same kind of design as these other metal slit drums. It has slits that tune the notes. This one's tuned to D minor. Uh, but the slits are very complex. And so this does something that no other metal slit drum that I know of can do. And it, that is that it allows you to pull harmonics out of these notes. incredible. A lot of the magic of a hang drum is that you can do that. And in some ways this uh, this is better than a hang drum because you can get the whole series of harmonics where with a hang drum usually, usually you'll get the octave and maybe the fifth. Um, but this can do the octave and fifth very strongly on every single note. It's a fine instrument. And uh, in its own way, it's as good as a hang. It's just different, you know, but it's, it's different in a very interesting and unique way. So it's cool. This one's not going back on the shelf because I because I now want to hang. Um, it's still very useful and, and beautiful in its own way. And now I've got this. And again, buttons. You gotta keep your buttons away because they make all kinds of noise. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to sit with this. I think it's lean back. If you're trying to lean over it, then it'll fall out of your lap, but this is stable. So Here's my new hang. way to play this most stable way is probably on a drum stand like this I need one that's a little shorter though or, or a chair that's a little taller there
also seen these played like this. And I'm just figuring this out because I've had this less than 20, well, like 12 hours now. Uh, but it's amazing how, how quickly, I mean, it's an easy instrument to play. It, uh, getting the most out of it is, is going to take years to learn, but getting started on it's pretty easy. So the hole in the bottom is a tuned resonator. It's tuned to the root note of the instrument, and it's a Helmholtz resonator. And you can get some interesting effects by playing around with this, this resonator in the back surface. So the instrument can be played like this. Something like that. It's I don't know if the microphone's picking up the really deep bass frequencies from uh, from doing that. So there you have it. That's my my whole journey, hand pan journey that finally led to owning a Pantheon Steel C major uh, 23 inch uh, hand pan. Thanks for watching.